chapter number 18, Psalm chapter number 18 in your Bibles. <clears throat> Psalm chapter number 18 in your Bibles. Let's hope so, amen. <laughs> Psalm chapter number 18 in your Bibles. We're continuing our series through the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter number 18, we're just going to get into verse number 2 tonight. Let's first look at verse number 1. If we remember last time we talked about we need to love God, and the Bible says in verse number 1 of Psalm chapter number 18, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. And verse number 2 is what we're going to look at tonight. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. God, you're just an awesome God. You're a powerful God. And Father, you are, you are my everything. Amen. You're an incredible God, and I'm just so thankful for all that you do for us. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your grace. I thank you for your faithfulness, your compassion. Thank you so much for your long suffering. And Father, I pray you just work and move in a special way tonight. I pray you would put a hedge of protection about us. I pray, Father, you'd stir and work and do what only you can do. Lord, I pray, dear God, that each and every one of us would be in tune with what you have for us tonight. Help us to meet with you. Thank you for the song service. Thank you for the testimonies. And Lord, I just want to praise you. You're an awesome God. Thank you for bringing me back to church. Thank you for an opportunity to preach your word once again. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, as you, if you look at uh, the part of the Psalms there that are above the first verse, it gives you kind of a little bit of the background, the backdrop of what this Psalm was from and what it was. And David had been delivered from King Saul. And uh, this Psalm was written to glorify the Lord and to honor him for that deliverance that he was given. And so during the time that David was running from Saul, he was constantly in danger of dying. He was constantly uh, running for his life. There was always in the back of his mind that Saul could kill him. But praise be to God, God showed himself powerful in David's life and delivered him over and over again. And now he's been delivered from his enemies and he lifts up his voice to praise the Lord who has given him the victory. And this really is the song of David that he sings for that victory. And so, but you know, we also have a song. Yeah. We also have a song of vis victory, amen? And uh, uh, victory in Jesus, amen? Because we've been born again, we've been saved, we have something to sing about as well, amen? 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Bible says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Romans 8, 37, nay, in all things we are more than conquerors. Yeah. I'm glad that it doesn't stop right there. Amen. I'm glad it continues to stay in that verse through him that loved us. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that we're a conqueror because of him and that it's through him that we can do what we do. Amen. That we can go through these things when we were saved by the Lord, He gave us victory over our enemies also. Can I get a witness right there? I don't care how bad it gets in this earth. I don't care how bad it gets in this life. Listen, one day I'm going to be with Jesus. One day I'm going to be in heaven and all of the afflictions of this life will be but a vapor. It'll be gone. And you know what? When we're in heaven, I'm thinking that we're not going to really care too much about what happened on here on earth. It's going to be an amazing thing to be with Jesus. He's an awesome God. Listen, I'm here to tell you it's an amazing thing. We who once were lost in sin now are saved by grace. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. I've entitled the message tonight, He is my everything. He is sufficient. And when you stop and you look at this in verse number two, we see here David proclaims his love for God in verse number one. And then in verse number two, he basically stops and says, you know what? He is my everything. 
He goes down and through here, and he just points one thing right after another, that God is his everything. Amen. I want you to notice David's praise after deliverance. David's praise after his deliverance. The first thing, number one, David's proclamation. Look there with me at verse number two. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my strength and my, my God and my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I'm going to break down each one of these things tonight. The most important thing in life is knowing that you're right with God. It is a wonderful thing to have a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing to experience the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives on a daily basis. To be able to step into that prayer closet, to be able to talk to the Lord and to have God step in and just kind of open up your understanding and breathe on you and just really have that presence take place in your life. Amen. I tell you, you know, I haven't been in church for a while and it really, I'll just be honest with you, it just really stinks not being in church. And so, but you know what? I'm glad that even though I wasn't able to be in church, that I was still able to have some pretty precious times with the Lord on my couch. And uh, yes, you can officially call me a couch potato right now. It would fit, uh, be, be a really good fitting. And so anyways, I'll tell you what, when you look at my couch right now, there's this spot that has an indentation that looks just like, well, me. And so uh, I'm telling you, and you know what? I sit there and I'd listen to the Bible and I'd go through my prayers and it's just, it's amazing how God comforts and helps and strengthens. It's an awesome thing. And so we see here David's proclamation. It's a wonderful thing. To make sure, hey, listen, if there's anything going on in your life tonight that it would keep you from God and keep you from allowing God to speak to you, man, get that thing squared away. Get it squared away. Have a right relationship with Him. There is nothing better in all the world than being able to hear from Jesus. Man, salvation is a wonderful thing, amen? It's good to be saved. Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Or no, no, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth in the righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, what a wonderful promise from God. Amen. Aren't you glad that your Bible is really clear about what, what it takes to get saved? And I'm awful glad that it's not difficult. I'm glad that all we have to do is place our faith and trust in His finished work on the cross and accept Him as our personal Savior. Can I get a witness? I'm glad that, hey, listen, I'm glad that it doesn't require me to be at a certain level of a good person throughout my life to make sure that I still get in. You know, the truth of the matter is, I'd be one big, t I'd be in trouble. Amen. And you know who else would be in trouble? You'd be in trouble with me. Amen. We'd all be in trouble. Amen. I'm glad that salvation's free and full. Can I get a witness? The full gospel. Well, there's only one kind of gospel I know of, and it's a full gospel. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What an awesome God. Yeah, this full gospel assembly crowd, they add stuff to that. You know that? What a bunch of garbage that is. God help us. It's good to be saved. Amen. Yeah. Acts chapter number 16, verse number 31. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, say amen. amen. It's good to be born again. David basically says that the Lord is everything to him. Notice how David uses these eight metaphors in relaying his dependence on God. First thing I want you to notice, the Lord is my stability. We see the Lord is my rock. He, this rock, stability, stable. David describes God as a rock. And the Bible throughout the scriptures describes Jesus Christ as a rock. Hence the name of our church. Amen. Solid rock, Baptist church. We're standing on the solid rock. Amen. He is our rock. He is our stability. When everything else in the world is being tossed and twisted and bounced around, God forever remains stable. Amen. He remains the same. I'm glad that halfway through my life, he didn't decide, you know, Jim, I think I'm going to add a few things in there for your salvation because you just, 
you're just not quite cutting the mustard, amen. And man, I don't even know how you cut mustard, amen. So anyways, listen, the bottom line is this right here. It's good to be born again. And I'm glad God doesn't change. Malachi chapter number three, verse number six, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I'm glad that God is long-suffering, amen. Can I get a witness right there? I'm glad that when I mess up and do stupid things, God's faithful, God's forgiving, and God just sits back and says, okay, whenever you're ready to get right with me, I'm here waiting, amen. Can I get a witness? It's good to be born again. The Lord is stable. He doesn't change. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm glad that God does not change. He is faithful. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift. You know what the perfect gift is? It's the wonderful gift of salvation. That perfect gift. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Aren't you glad God Amen. is stable? Amen. I'm glad God's stable. You know what? I accepted Jesus Christ on January 11, 2006 at 12.35 p.m. Amen. And I'm here to tell you something right now. I'm glad that the day I accepted Jesus Christ, listen, from this point forward, it doesn't matter how much sin I've committed since then, and I'm here to tell you, since January 11, 2006, there's been a boatload of sin. Uh -oh. There's been a boatload of sin. And listen, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> hey, you better believe it, amen. Everybody in this room's in the same boat. You sin multiple times of a day, That's whether right. you know it or not. Right. Can I get a witness? Right. And God still loves you. That's right. Thank you and God, God is still going to take you to heaven when you die. Can I get a witness? God is stable. I'm glad that his love for me isn't dependent on my obedience to him. I'm glad that it's because, hey, I'm his kid. Just like Devin, I don't care what that kid does. I don't care how he ends up acting. I don't care what he says. I still love him. Now, I may not like him sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. But hey, listen, the bottom line, I'm glad God likes me too, amen? I remember that message, Brother Araiza preached during revival a couple years ago, man. That was powerful, amen? And so I'm glad God, listen, I'm glad God doesn't change. He is stable. And D David was pointing out, the Lord is my rock. He is my stability. He is my foundation. Listen, when everything seems up and down in life, just run to Jesus, Amen. And he'll put you on even ground. Listen, look at this now. Not only is the Lord my stability, but also the Lord is my safety. Look at what it says. It says, the Lord is my rock and my what? Fortress. fortress. When you think about a fortress, you think about something safe. You think about a place to get into that will keep you safe from the problems around the attacks of the enemy. David says that God is like a fortress. This surely has reference to the lofty mountain citadels that which he fled when he was running from Saul. David reminds us that the Lord is a place of safety to which we can flee in times of adversity and trial. The Bible says in Psalm 57, 1, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until the calamities be overpassed. We have a place of safe refuge, and it's a fortress where we can run to and have protection from our enemies. Listen, you're having battles in your life, just get with Jesus. Amen. Just go to Jesus. Amen. Hey, listen, being in Christ is the place to be. Being abiding in him and running into him and being in that place, that fortress, that place of protection. It is safety. Amen. You can count on the fact that if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. You're safe in the arms of God. He's an awesome God, amen? He's a powerful God. Not only is the Lord my safety and also is the Lord uh, 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 my stability, but also the Lord is my Savior. Look at this. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my what? Deliverer. 
Listen, he's our savior, amen. He's delivered us from that awful place called hell. David refused to the Lord as his deliverer. This word refers to the one who saves, the one who rescues, the one who delivers another from danger. This is a word that is filled with glory, amen. I don't know about you, but if you're saved in here, say hallelujah. Man, it is good to be born again. It's good to be saved. I am saved for all of eternity. And I'm glad I don't ever have to worry about losing that. Can I get a witness? Man, it's good to be born again. Man, I'll tell you something right now. I am so glad that you don't have to be faithful to every single church service to go to heaven. I'd have lost it all last two weeks, amen. I'd been doomed to hell, amen. If I'd have died in the last two weeks, it'd been done. I'd have been burning in hell. Man, I'm telling you, can you imagine what kind of fear life that would be? Always worrying about, man, I wonder if I'm going to be good enough to get to heaven. If that ever crosses your mind, you ought to self-check your salvation. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because my Bible says it is a free gift. Yes. Yes. You can't earn it, and there's nothing you can do to keep it. That's right. Can I get a witness? That's right. That's right. We're going to look at a little something here in a little bit, man. It's exciting stuff. I love the Bible. The Bible's a wonderful book. Can I get a witness? Yeah. 2 Corinthians, you know, not only this matter of being saved for eternity from hell and all of this other stuff, having a home in heaven, but you know what? He saves us from day to day, from day to day, just like it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, for which cause we faint not. You know, when it comes down to it, if you're, if you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, say glory to God. There is no reason to faint in the day of adversity. There is no reason to faint in the day of adversity. Listen to this. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. Now let's get a witness. I think everybody in this room can say, yes, our outward man is perishing. Listen, us men in here that have less hair than we used to have when we were younger, we are perishing one hair at a time. Amen. And so listen, I'm here to tell you right now that God is awesome. But listen to what this says. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That new man, that inward man. You know that, that passage that says in the Bible, you know, that what's God worked in, we've got to work out. Are you with me? Listen, that inward man is renewed day by day. Now, the question is, is can the world see it? Are we working that inward man to an outward man? Can I get a witness? And so as we look at this, God's doing His part every single day. You can mark it down. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. Praise God for His daily provision. The Lord is my Savior. He's the deliverer. Amen? He delivered me from hell, and He delivers me day by day. Aren't you excited about that? The simple fact of the matter is we do have a real enemy and his name is Satan, the devil, Lucifer. Are you with me? And the simple fact of the matter is, is he is looking to destroy and conquer and defeat. But each and every day, the the inward man is renewed every single day. And you know what? Even if we were to die by persecution or martyrdom, well, praise be to God. What's going to happen then? You're going to be with Jesus, amen, to be absent from the body and to be what? Present with the Lord, amen. So no matter what, even if Satan thought he got a victory over us and got us out of the world, killed us, he didn't get a victory, amen. We just got the victory, amen. We just realized the victory in the real. He can defeat us, amen. Listen, what happens in our life is allowed by God, simple as that. And so the Lord is my Savior, but not only that, and I like this too, the Lord is my sovereign. The Lord is my sovereign. Look at what it says. He goes on to say, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, and what? My God. He's my God. And you know what? People have all kinds of different gods in the world today, little G-O-Ds. Now, you'll notice it's a capital G in our text. But listen to me. You know what Buddhists do? They live the way Buddha says to live. Are you with me? 
their God. Do you know what uh, 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 a Muslim does? Tries to do things that would honor Allah and Muhammad. Are you with me? Which, if they really actually followed the Quran, man, they'd be like those crazies over there in the Middle East. And so and that's the truth too. They'd hate the infidel and they'd either convert or die. Your choice. That's, that's the way their law is, their Sharia law. And listen, when we look at this and we see this, I'm telling you right now, it's an amazing thing that the Lord is my God. The Lord is my sovereign. David refers to him as my God. David is saying he is the almighty God. This word pictures God as one who is over all things, as one who is in control of all things. Can I get a witness? Amen. He is in control. The saints of God should surely rejoice in the knowledge that everything that happens is in God's plan and that He is in control of all things, even when we cannot make sense of it. Can I get a witness? No matter how we feel about it, no matter how it seems seem to be, I, I am glad. You know, one of the greatest days of my life was, is when I realized that I didn't have to understand everything that was going on around me. That was a great day when I realized that I gave up control, which is a huge step for a Christian to make sure they do, and let God have control. Are you with me? He's sovereign. The day that I stopped blaming God for the bad things that were happening in my life was a great day in Jim Frost's life. And people do that. People blame God. How could God let this happen to me? Well, if you'd read your Bible a little bit and start trusting Him and knowing that He's got a purpose for every single thing that happens in your life, are you with me? And instead of blaming God, you ought to be blessing God. Bless the Lord, oh, bless the Lord, oh, bless His holy name. Amen? Because He is an awesome God. He does do all things well. And you know what? Wicked people are wicked, and they're always going to be wicked. Are you with me? But God is always just, and God is always right. He is my sovereign. He is in control. Isaiah 45, 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make, listen to this now, Isaiah 45, 7. You might want to write that down. You might even want to go there and outline this verse. This will help you. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Yes. Yes. And create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God is in control. Are you with me? And He creates evil. Amen? Yep. And He's just, and He's perfect, and He is always right. Can I get a witness right there? Go over to 1 Samuel with me. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. I want you to see this passage. 1 Samuel I'm thinking chapter number either 15 or 16. I'll let you know when I get there. Well, I'm in 2 Samuel. No wonder I couldn't find it. 1 Samuel. Boom. 1 Samuel chapter number 16. When you get there, say amen. amen. Verse number 14, the Bible says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Yes. And a what? Evil spirit from who? The Lord. the Lord troubled him. Was God just? Yes. Absolutely was. Saul wasn't right with God. And that's why the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. They even recognized that it was an evil spirit from God. Are you with me? Yes. And so God is just. Was God wrong for doing what he did? Absolutely not. Are you with me? 
And listen, sometimes an evil spirit comes from God. And listen, I may not understand the reason why, but I guarantee you that God is just in doing what he does. He creates evil. And listen, he created evil. And listen, the body, listen, did God create all things? Yes, he did. And so I may not understand it. I may not be able to comprehend everything in my mind, but I do know one thing. The Bible says God's just, and God's holy, and God is perfect. Yep. Are you with me? Yep. And this little peanut brain up here does not need to understand everything because this mind is very, very limited. Are you with me? But God is not. He's perfect. And you've got to allow God to be God. And God has given us more than enough evidence that this is His Word, that it is perfect, and what it says will come to pass and has come to pass. Hey, listen, and the truth of the matter is, is we've just got to learn to realize that, you know what? God knows best. And I've got to allow Him to be sovereign in my life. So, you know, one of the biggest problems I think a lot of Christians have is the fact that they're always trying to control their circumstances. And you can't. You can't control your circumstances. We just got to let God have His way. We got to just let God do what He's going to do. We find ourselves, go over to Acts with me. Ooh, rabbit trails. I love rabbit trails. Go over to the book of Acts. I believe it's in chapter number maybe four. No wonder. I, I'm telling you what, my mind is crazy because I'm in the book of Luke and I'm like, this is not even, where, where am I? <laughs> Acts. The book of Acts, chapter number four. I'm pretty sure it's chapter number four. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, wait, what is wrong with my brain? Actually, it's chapter number five. It's chapter number five. Look at verse number 34 with me. They've brought Peter and John once again before the council because they were preaching in Jesus' name. Then stood there up one in the council of Pharisees named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, uh, boasting himself to be somebody uh, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxation, taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to what? But if it be of who? Ye cannot overthrow it. Now listen to this. This is the key. Lest haply ye be found even to do what? Fight against God. Are you with me? Now, the truth of the matter is, is when we try to control our circumstances and our setting and try to do things in our own power, in our own strength, and try to figure out and control our circumstances, when God is trying to do something else in our life, and what are we doing? We're fighting against the work of God in our own lives. And listen, we try to control and control and control and control and the best thing to do is just step back and pray and say, God, listen, 
I don't understand what's going on right now, but this thing just keeps popping itself up in my life over and over again. And I need to just step back and say, God, what do you want me to learn? How do you want me to glorify you? Is there something here that I'm supposed to be learning? Is there something here that I'm supposed to be doing? Is there something here I need to stop doing? Because this thing just keeps getting thrown in my face over and over again. This same kind of a situation keeps coming up. What am I supposed to learn from this? Help me get past this so that I can move on. Or if maybe you just want me to glorify you through this thing, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to give you glory. I'm just going to glorify you. What do you want from me, God? Stop trying to control and start submitting. And let God seek in God's face and finding out what he has for you. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that what? Love God. There's a question right there. Are you in love with God? To them who are called according to His purpose. Job chapter number 23, verse number 10. But He knoweth the way that I take. When He hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And Job, you were exactly right. You stuck to your guns. You stood true. And God said that you never sinned in all of this. And you did come forth as gold. And God blessed him abundantly after the great trial that he went through. The Lord is my sovereign. He is in control. Amen. He's my God. And so we see the Lord is my stability. The Lord is my uh, safety. The Lord is my Savior. The Lord is my sovereign. And th- uh, whatever letter this is, the Lord is my strength. Amen. The Lord is my strength. Look at what it says. And it says, oh, oh boy. It says in verse number two, it says, the Lord is my strength. And it says, well, that's what it says, my strength, amen? The Lord is my strength, amen? And David tells us that God is all we need. Amen. He is my everything. Amen. Church, we can ever rejoice in the fact that the Lord God of heaven will be the strength of our lives. None of us knows what we will face as we go through the years of our lives. Can I get a witness? But we can know that God in heaven will give us the strength we need to face life trials and battles and that he will help us all along the way. Can I get a witness? He is our strength. He is all the strength that we need. Go to 2 Corinthians with me, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, you know the passage this is where Paul talking about the thorn in the flesh. 2 Corinthians But this is a great passage, chapter number 12, looking at verses 9 and 10. This is a great, great passage. This is is one of these verses, when you're struggling, you ought to go here. When you're dealing with problems, you ought to go here. When you're dealing with not understanding things, you ought, listen, get in your book. Get in the book. Do you, listen, I've been thinking about this, I've been chewing on this, I think I talked to Devin about it. I don't know if I said it in the pulpit or not yet. But think about it, when, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, 40 days. 40 days by Satan, when Satan tempted him, what did Jesus respond with? Lord God. Did he call angels in? Nope. Could have. He, couldn't. he could have called angels in. He could have asked God the Father to step, stomp him out. He could have stomped him out himself. Oh, yeah. He could have done all kinds of things. But he chose to just simply quote Scripture. He quoted Scripture. Now let me ask you this. Was he carrying a Bible in his hand? Because he had it somewhere. Are you with me? He He didn't just have it up here memorized, but he had it in here. Are you with me? Now stop and think about this. It's awful hard for a God to help you in times of temptation if you don't have anything up here and in here for him to work with. Are you with me? You got to know the scriptures 
And not just a head knowledge, but it's got to be in your heart. You want to do battle spiritually? You've got to have the scriptures. You've got to have it known, memorized, and meditated into your heart. So when the temptations come, God can draw to your mind those scriptures. Listen, a lot of the reason why God doesn't bring people by your way to talk to about the Lord is because the simple fact of the matter is, is he can't just bring somebody up at any time because you wouldn't know how to get your way around. Because you don't know the scriptures well enough. The meditation and the memorization of the scriptures is so vitally important to spiritual warfare. You've got to know it. You've got to know, well, I struggle with memorization. Repetition. Repetition. Repeti- I don't care who it is. Repetition. And more repetition and more repetition and more repetition. Lots of repetition. Several times a day. Several days, several weeks, several months. You just keep on going in it. You just keep on going through those verses and you meditate on those things and let God work in those things and He'll give you the victory. The Lord is my strength. And what is the Bible called? The sword of the... No, no, no. Ephesians chapter number 6, the sword of the Spirit. The Spirit uses the Word. Oh, say, born again, got the Holy Spirit living inside me. Well, how much of a sword have you given Him to work with? I got this little stubby thing here with a half a verse. Jesus wept. That's all I got. Well, you're going to do some real powerful spiritual warfare with that. Or do you have a two-handled, doubled edge, like a 20-foot sword hanging out there that you yourself can't swing, but the Holy Spirit, boy, He can do some damage with that thing. Are you with me? You've got to have it here and here if you're going to have spiritual victory. He is my strength. The Lord is my strength. David realized that his strength came from God. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, look at verse number 9 with me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in what? And this ought to be the motto of your life. When I am weak, he is strong. My grace is, and this is why God has to do things to us so many times physically. to weaken us so that He can be strong. Are you with me? And that's what it takes. Sometimes God has to weaken us because we will not get ourselves weak before God. And that's the truth, and that's why God puts us through the things He puts us through so that we can become strong or that He can become strong in us. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. That's, listen, when I'm feeling the worst about God, Getting in the pulpit is usually when God uses me the most. When I'm feeling nervous about what I'm going to preach and I'm a little unsure about what's going on, God steps in and He takes over for me. And it's not Jim Frost. It's just Jim Frost is finally weak enough so God can do something with him. It's amazing how God works. He's an incredible God. Isaiah 43, 2, the Bible says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, that doesn't sound fun, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Because when you're weak, he is strong. 
Turn over to Hebrews chapter number 4 with me. Hebrews chapter number 4 in your Bibles. Hebrews chapter number 4. I'm just here to tell you I'm having the time of my life right now. Hebrews chapter number 4 in your Bibles. Look at verse number 14. The Bible says in verse number 14 of Hebrews chapter number 4, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our what? Profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He can be. He knows. He was tempted, amen, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The very things we sinned in, He didn't. Where we felt the temptation, He didn't. He feels. He knows. And this is what makes Him so much more personable to us because He does understand. He does get it. Look at this now. Let us therefore, because of who He is and what He's done, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of what? You ever been in a time of need? Like every day? Can I get a witness? And if you haven't figured out that you need Him every day, you probably ought to get to that place. Amen, because you do need him every single day in a time of need. I'm just, you hear people say, oh, they're so needy. That's me. (laughs) I need him. I need him now. I need him yesterday. I need him today. I need him tomorrow. Listen, I need him forever. And I need him in everything. God help us, amen. He is that ever-present God. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I'm glad that God promised that He was our strength. Amen. He is that strength. Listen, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I'm with you always. I'm with you always. Always, I'm always with you. If you're saved and born again and you've been washed in the blood and your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life and, and, and you're redeemed and you know it, can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. He's always with you. Listen, He's always with you. And you can just turn to Him in the hardest of times and He will give you strength. Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. And what? Contentment with what? Godliness is great gain. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Because you want to know what? I am satisfied with Jesus. He is enough and he is my everything. Not only that, Not only is He our strength, but the Lord is my shield. He's my shield. Look at what it says. I love this. This is one of my my favorites right here. And He says, In whom I will trust my what? Buckler. Now, I love this shield. Amen? He's the shield. You know, sometimes God is there to strengthen us in the trials, in the battles, but sometimes He just steps in between. He just, he just takes the heat for you, amen? amen? He just gets in front of you. He gets between you and the problem, and he's just your buckler. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Sometimes, listen, I don't, I don't listen, we're not even going to begin to know and understand how many times God has stepped in and been your buckler. He just stood in front of you and completely. Actually, Devin, you're, come on up here, brother. Come on. Devin's taking the heat. Come on, hurry up, man. Young man. Stand right there. He's taking the heat. I mean, he's got all these fiery darts hitting him, and he's just getting all of that stuff. And then God just steps in. Now, I'm big enough to cover him up. You can't even see him. Amen? And so, hallelujah. And God's taking it. (laughs) Mrs. Frost throwing pens at me. Amen? Listen, do you see what I'm saying? He is from head to toe protection. He's our buckler. That buckler is a shield that covered from head to toe. You can completely get behind it. And when those fiery darts from the devil come flying in, they don't get to you because he's our buckler. 
as God, as David is relating God in a metaphor type way. He's relating him to things that he knew. He's my fortress. He's that place of safety. He's, he's that place I can go in. He's my rock. He's stability for me. He's my savior. He delivered me. He's my God. Amen. He's my sovereign. He is in control. He's got everything under control. He can handle it. I don't have to figure it out. He's God. And he's my shield. He stands between me and the enemy. And what a blessing it is. Sometimes when we're weak and struggling, he just steps in and takes the heat for yeah. us. And he knows when to and when not to. He knows when, when we need to be strengthened in the battle. Oh, yeah. And then he knows when we can't handle it, he'll step in. That's right. Because he's an awesome God and he's powerful. Psalm 91, 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Can I get a witness? Head to toe protection. Amen. I like that kind of protection. I'll tell you what, they still haven't come up with a car to be able to do that for you. Amen. I'll tell you, it'll be a great day when they do. Amen. But I've got something better. I've got Jesus. Not only is the Lord my shield, but the Lord is also my security. Look at what it says. I love this. Now, this is great stuff. And the horn of my salvation, he is my security. Here, the Lord is called the horn of salvation. The horn is a symbol of strength and conquest. When David calls God the horn of salvation, he is saying that the Lord is the strength of salvation and that in his salvation, we have absolute security. Isn't that amazing? I believe that we can all rejoice in the knowledge that if we are in the Lord, if you're saved, say amen, amen. then we are totally secure in Him. Turn over yeah. to 1 Peter chapter yeah. number 1 with me. 1 Peter chapter number 1, we're almost there. 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. I love this. This is good. We're going to pick it up in verse number 4. Well, let's back it up a little bit, amen. Let's look at verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to what? An inheritance incorruptible and what? Undefiled and that what? Fadeth not away reserved in heaven for who? You. Who? 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 You. The who, the you from verse number four, the you. Amen? Those you. That'd be you. Who are what? Kept by whose power? The power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last when? Time. Listen, we are secure in Christ Jesus. Listen. He ain't lost one yet. And you know what? He ain't going to start with you. That's right. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can count on him. He's an awesome God and he's a powerful God and he is faithful. He's not going to lose a single one. Turn over to John chapter number 6. You know where I'm going. John chapter number 6. You know the passage. John chapter number 6. There's just some great things about this horn. And there's some great ways to, there's different teachings about it in the different commentaries that I've read. One of those commentaries by uh, Harry Ironside, he made the statement that this horn was talking about the bulls of Bashan and their horns. And these bulls were big and powerful bulls. And these bulls, man, I'm telling you what, they would just, they could ram and rip and throw. You know how a bull can grab a hold of something with their horns and flip that thing right? You ever seen a bullfighter with the capes? Get, you ever see one get grabbed and thrown up in the air like a toy? And so they think of this, this horn of salvation in that symbolic way. And so they also think about the horn of salvation as a ram's horn. You ever seen something rammed by, by a ram with the horns? I mean, like we're talking like one of those mountain mountain uh, uh, goats, mountain goat with those big curled horns. 
Man, grab, can you imagine getting hit with one of those things? Man, I'm telling you what, you'd never be the same again. Listen, I'm telling you right now, there's some great things. But then another illustration also was the fact that it was the horn that you could blow. Yes. And it was that kind of a horn. And how that that horn was this security in the fact that in those days, I don't know if you didn't know this, but they didn't have cell phones. And, uh, <laughs> and they didn't have those little uh, emergency necklace things that you could just take in. But they would carry horns when they were out by themselves, whether it be cutting wood or, or whatever they were doing. And if they got in distress, they could blow that horn in a certain way and people would come to help. It was a security thing. Are you with me? And so it was so that, that, that if they got hurt, there'd be somebody to come and help. And so the Lord is my security. I can blow the horn and the Lord is there. That's an incredible thing. John chapter number six, look at verse number 38 with me. For I came down from heaven, not to do in mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose what? Nothing. But should raise it up again at the what? If you're saved, say amen. amen. Can you say rapture? <laughs> I'm thinking it's a pretty good thing. God is our security. And lastly, the Lord is my supply. Look at this. This is good stuff. And my what? High tower. Now, the high tower was also a place of security and a place of safety, but it was also a place of supply. The towers were kept stocked. So if they had to fight the battle from the tower for a number of days because they were surrounded, they had food, they had the weapons, they had everything they needed up there to be able to handle what was going on around them. He's our supply. When they're completely cut off, they could go up into the tower and they could look down. They were above all of the turmoil, all of the problems, and they could shower arrows down, stones, whatever they had up there of any kind of weight and throw it down on the enemy. Are you with me? But at the same time, they had the water they needed, they had the food they needed to be able to be there in that time of trouble. And that's what our God does for us. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 31. But wait on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall what? Mount up with wings as eagles. What do, we, what do eagles do when there's a storm? They fly above it in safety. And they just sat right up there and float around. That'd be so awesome, wouldn't it? You know someday we're going to be able to do that. Isn't that going to be a wonderful thing? Just to be above all the problems. Someday during the tribulation period when everything is just horrible on this earth, we're going to be above it all. God is awesome, amen? The Bible says over in 1 Samuel 17, 47, that the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. We face battles in our lives. We're in a war, and we're going to have many, just like in every war. There's many, many battles. And what we need to get good at is letting God fight the battle for us. Are you with me? David said, Basically, from the Lord is my rock to being my high tower, my watchtower, he's my everything. God is my everything. Jesus is my everything. Is Jesus your everything? 
Is he your stability? Or are you going to something or someone else for stability? Is he your safety? Is he your strength? Is he your sovereign? Is he allowed to be in control? Is he your safety? Is he your security? Is he your supply? Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. He's my everything. He's my everything. We sang that song, Christ is all I need. Is that true in your life? Is God enough? Is God enough in your life? He should be. And He wants to be in that position in your life. And when we look to Him and we see Him as our stability and our strength and our safety and our security, we look to Him as our shield, we look to Him as our strength and our sovereign and our supply, when we look to Him for all of these areas in our life, you will be satisfied. This is the key. God is enough. And you've got to let Him be enough. And then all those other things that we spend so much time wanting after, when we become content with Him, He's enough. It's amazing how all of these other things then all of a sudden just take place. And all of this battling and fighting, all of this trying to get whatever we can, all that stuff comes to an end. God's enough. He is my everything. Father, we sure do love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. I pray you bless the invitation and help each one of us be obedient to your spirit. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. If God spoke to your heart, you come on. Altar's open. The altar's open. You come on.